DK Metcalf may have two gold jackets by the time his career is said and done. I'm a retired NFL player, and here's what I'd do if I were in DK's shoes to not only extend my career roughly five years once people start writing him off at receiver, but to take his career from legendary to completely a pool of one and do something nobody's ever done before. I just went down this mental rabbit hole, and it started with Brock Bowers, because Raider Nation till I die. I'm, I played for the Raiders my whole career, and I'm a big fan of Bowers. And I was just looking into him. Okay, he's six foot three, two 230 pounds. He's listed um, on NFL.com by the Raiders. I thought that's undersized for a tight end. That's maybe the size of a big wide receiver, but he wouldn't hack it at wide receiver out wide. You know, speed and twitchiness and quickness and all those things. But he'll be dominant because he lines up at the tight end position. And then I started to think of big wide receivers and who comes to your mind first? DK Metcalf, six foot four, 235 pounds. Stop there, listed at 235 pounds. Maybe he hits that on the scale once a week in the morning after he pisses butt naked. This is a guy who has a very awful and depleted diet drinks black coffee all day, works out twice, doesn't give himself any protein, any glycogen. Then he stuffs his face full of four bags of candy, gets a huge insulin spike, gives himself no protein to push that into the muscles. Big insulin spike for no reason. And then he eats dinner. And that gives you a 235-pound DK Metcalf, single-digit body fat, probably 6, 5, 6%. He's a biscuit away from 260. He starts eating breakfast. Come on. This is a guy that could be a dominant tight end yesterday. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, there's so much more that goes into tight end than that. You, you have to be able to block and da 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 Go ahead and turn the tape on. Look at some of the big hits. He, this guy is a machine. He's an alien. He's extraterrestrial. He's a dog already, and he loves contact. People have clear shots on him. There's one in particular. It gives me the chills when I watch it. The guy has a clear shot on DK to absolutely explode him, tries, bounces off, and looks injured. And he said, hey, I told you it's going to take a lot to come take me down. This guy's unreal. He's an alien. All it would take is for him to get with his offensive lineman and be like, hey, teach me some inline blocking technique. A lot of blocking is a mentality. It's a willingness to get your hands dirty. He's got that. He's got the mentality. He wants it. So you also have to consider, too, DK is bigger than Brock Bowers. He's six foot four, but his six foot four is different than a lot of guys six foot four. He's all arms and legs. He's got 35 inch arms and his legs are probably up to my rib cage. He's, that's a different kind of height and it gives you a different kind of range than other people at that same height. So he has probably better range and catching radius than most tight ends already. And then you also, you know, being on the outside, being double covered and being, having to be covered by cornerbacks who are, it's a, it's, it's a lot easier. And I know because I played linebacker and one-on-one -on -one coverage is the hardest thing of that job. And it's not your expertise and you're nowhere near as good as a corner at it, that it would be a little easier for him. So once DK Metcalf starts to lose a step or two at his position, which he will, everybody does. It's part of the process of aging. Now he might delay that out a little bit if he did start stop if he stopped eating like a four-year-old that <laughs> has the choice to eat whatever he wants to he might delay that out a little bit but inevitably it will hit and when it does I'd go and put my hand in the dirt go play tight end and you get two careers in one you get a resurrection and you have to remember even when he loses a step at at receiver, he was a 4.3340 guy. This is a former track athlete we're talking about as well. We've all seen him hit 22.6 miles per hour on the tape chasing that dude down. He has next level speed. So him losing a step or two, yeah, he probably still could play wide receiver. And then if he loses another one, he's still going to have elite speed at the tight end position. I'll take a 4.55 tight end uh, DK Metcalf any day of the week. Absolutely. Plus his ball skills, his adjustment skills to the ball, his range, all those things now being covered by linebackers and safeties as opposed to cornerbacks, huge advantage, huge mismatch, unreal. Um, 
And so it's kind of a no-brainer. The only obstacle is DK Metcalf. It could be potentially pride or ego. Will a superstar wide receiver, wide receiver one, be willing to even admit that he's no longer elite caliber wide receiver, let alone take a quote-unquote demotion to go put his hand in the dirt, to go get his hands dirty and play tight end. And it's a physically more demanding position at an older age after he's already you know, made potentially hundreds of millions of dollars and um, had all these accolades. Will he be able to have the same kind of drive and hunger and willingness to do that at that? I don't know. That's one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is a complete reframe. You reframe the situation. Now, think about it this way. And I'll even go back. There, there was a semi-viral interview with uh, Shannon Sharp talking to DK about his diet, saying, man, you got to clean that up. Come on. And DK is essentially saying, I'm going to do things my way, you know, and I'm going to show everybody, blah, blah, blah. And Shannon made a great point. He said, okay, yeah, I get that, but you got to take into account all the little things that make up this big thing. You are a freak. You are an alien. You are all of those things. And you might be able to eat like a child and still do those things for now. But do you want to be, you know, a legendary guy? Or do you want to be otherworldly, stratospheric, LeBron James-esque, Michael Jordan? Do you want to be on that level? Then you got to start dialing in the diet. Do all the different little things that make up this big thing. So part of that reframe is you can do and achieve something that nobody else has ever done in the NFL by giving yourself two Hall of Fame careers in one, assuming you stay healthy. You give yourself an extra five years, give or take, in the NFL playing this little kid's game that is the best in the world that you love. You get to extend it and play that much longer. You get to have this resurrection. He has a rare set of abilities and size and God-given talent to be able to do this transition seamlessly. Run out the clock on wide receiver and be the emo one of the most elite wide receivers ever and then just come over here and line up at this position and be one of the most potentially iconic tight ends ever, best tight ends ever. At that point, the problem's Canton's. Canton will have to make a choice that they've never had to make before. You give him two jackets, two trophies, or you classify him as a pass catcher. I wish all the best to DK Metcalf. That's what I would do. Live two careers in one. Stretch this game out as long as you can. Be a legend in a way that nobody's ever done it.